Oleta Lawanda Crane, September 8, 1913, November 7, 2007, was an African-American military officer, federal civil servant, and advocate for black women's rights and desegregation. Out of 300 women nationwide who entered officer training in the U.S. military in 1943, she was one of the three African-Americans. She served in the United States Air Force for 20 years, retiring with the rank of major. In 1964, she began working for the United States Department of Labor in Washington, D.C., becoming regional administrator of its Women's Bureau in Denver, Colorado, in 1984. She traveled and spoke extensively to women about employment rights, wages, and career opportunities. She received numerous awards and honors and was inducted into the Colorado Women's Hall of Fame in 1988. Oleta Lawanda Crane was born to V. Paula Crane in Earlsboro, Oklahoma, and grew up in Wewoka. She graduated from Douglas High School and studied at Langston University for three years, but received her bachelor's degree in social science from Lincoln University in Jefferson City, Missouri. She later earned an undergraduate degree in business administration from the University of Maryland's Extension University in Heidelberg, Germany. She took courses at the John F. Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University, Cambridge University in England, and the University of Vienna School of International Relations in Austria. After joining the civil service, she earned her master's degree in public administration at Northeastern University. Military career In the early 1940s, Crane taught gym and history in a segregated school in Hugo, Oklahoma. She decided to move to Colorado to find better paying work, and in 1942 obtained a job at the Denver Ordnance Plant cleaning toilets. She was inspired to enlist after seeing a Women's Army Auxiliary Corps poster calling for women to join military bands to aid the war effort. Upon enlisting, however, she learned that they were not seeking black women. Crane completed basic training and then applied to officer training. She was one of three black women out of 300 women nationwide to enter officer training in 1943. Crane was promoted to corporal in December 1942 and to company leader of an African-American unit in February 1943. In September, she was discharged from the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps so she could enter regular service in the Women's Army Corps as an Air Force second lieutenant. Crane was constantly exposed to racial discrimination in the Army. For example, as officers in training, the black women were not allowed to sleep in the same barracks as the white women, but were housed in private rooms. Nor were they permitted to use the showers at the same time as whites. When Crane would take her African-American company to the swimming pool for their weekly exercises, they were usually informed that the schedule had been changed. If they did get to swim, the pool would be cleaned the following day. Crane often joked about the discrimination telling a journalist who was coming to interview her. The building has two elevators. Mine is at the back. First Lieutenant Crane was the only black woman to be retained in the U.S. military after World War II. The Pentagon asked her to stay following the desegregation of the Army in 1947 because she got along so well with the troops. She was promoted to captain in May 1948 and was transferred to Westover Air Force Base in Massachusetts to work in intelligence. When she was accused of being a communist by her superior officer, Crane underwent months of investigations and emerged with a top-secret security clearance. She later served as personnel director at Elmendorf Air Force Base in Anchorage, Alaska, 1951, test control officer at an American base in Ryslip, England, 1952-1955, and manpower officer at Lindsay Air Station in Germany. She retired from active duty in June 1963 with the rank of major.